try a bunch of new things. I, I don't like trying new things because I usually get hurt. That's the problem. I get hurt or sick. I just have bad luck. I don't know what it is. Like every time I try to be adventurous, the world is like, see? <laughs> this is why you shouldn't. Like I remember uh, in Mexico, a few years ago, I crashed a scooter in Mexico, and I shouldn't be on a scooter. I shouldn't be on two wheels. I need four wheels at all times. <laughs> four wheels, all the time. But I made a new friend. You ever make a new friend and they have a suggestion and you don't want to seem lame, so you just go along with it? That's what happened. We were flying home that day and I made a new friend. He's like, hey, you want to rent some scooters? Go around the island? I'm like, hell yeah. Let's go rent some scoots. Let's get out there. Because I thought there would be like a, a tutorial video or something. Because one time I rented jet skis and they made us watch like a 15 minute VHS on how to work a jet ski and they had all the safety gear. And I was like, that's what I thought this was going to be and it wasn't. We just went to a shack and a little Mexican man threw keys at us. And that was the end of the seminar. <laughs> that was the whole thing. And it was so bad, like there was no safety gear. There was just a helmet that didn't fit. Like, that's all there was, and once we got out there, like, the helmet, like, the wind took it back, and the little rope would, like, choke me out. That was all of the safety. But I didn't even know how to turn this bike on. I was sitting on the bike trying to turn it on, and nothing was happening. My friends were already, like, doing wheelies and stuff, and I'm like, well, I'm right behind you, and I'm, I'm trying to get it going. It's not going, and the little Mexican man that rented it to me, he comes out, and he sees I'm having trouble, and he's like, are you good? And I'm like, I know, there's no vroom vroom, you know? Because we were speaking broken English and Spanish back at each other. We're trying to understand, but we can't understand. He's like, uh huh, huh. And I'm like, no vroom vroom, there's no vroom vroom. He's like, oh, vroom vroom. And I'm like, yeah, man, where's the vroom vroom? And he, go, he hit a button I didn't see, and the thing fired up. I'm like, yeah, vroom vroom. He's like, see, vroom vroom. And I'm like, is this the break? And he just shoved me off into traffic. <laughs> So there I am, downtown Cozumel, Mexico, rush hour traffic, and I could feel in my heart this was going to end well, you know? It was like watching a horror movie, you're like, when's it coming? I know it's coming, but when? It happened on a right turn, that's when it happened. <laughs> I made a right turn, and halfway into it I realized, I don't know how to make a right turn. <laughs> I don't know, there was no training. Am I supposed to drop a knee like it's a sports bike and I'm on like a, the Grand Prix of Budapest or something? Like, what do you want me to do? So I just made a turn and I was like, wow, we're gonna crash into the median. And my calculations were spot on. I, I nailed that median. And I went flying, I went flying. The helmet was on the back of my head, like a concrete yarmulke back there, just <laughs> holding on. And I crashed, I destroyed half the bike, and I'm not wearing protective gear other than this little bike helmet, so I'm just in shorts and a t-shirt, so I'm bleeding from everywhere, all right? My knee, my hand, really bad. Some of the locals had gathered to uh, cuss at me in Spanish, which is good. That's what you need after an accident, some hecklers. All right, that's very helpful. So I very quickly tried to pick up the bike and get it out of the street because everyone's yelling at me and I'm bleeding. And I picked it up by the handlebars. Remember, uh, that's the vroom vroom area. <laughs> Which, can I say, what a piss poor design that is. <laughs> Maybe some pedals next time. Maybe something away from where I gotta pick it up from. And I went to go pick it up and my hand hit the throttle and this thing shot out of my hands. <laughs> and it went down half a block without me on it. And I smashed the other side. I destroyed the scooter, you guys. There's no plastic left on it, the mirrors are gone, I'm bleeding, and I walked it back to the rental shack in shame. <laughs> and the dude who rented it saw me coming. He saw him all messed up, the bike's destroyed, and he ran out with all the English he knew. He just goes, what? What happened? And I was so offended that he would even ask that. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean what happened? Like, why didn't you have a tutorial video or something? Could have used a couple blocks, you know, whips around the block before you sent me out there. And so he's like assessing the damage, and he's like, uh, I'm like, how much is this gonna be? And he's like, it's gonna be 10,000 pesos. And I'm like, I don't know how much that is. Like, I don't keep up with the world currency markets, you know? That could be a dollar, that could be a million dollars. I have no idea. And he just kept saying 10,000 pesos, 10,000 pesos. So I just pulled out my visa, and I'm like, well, try that. <laughs> Give that a try, you know? And he swiped it, and I'm like, did it work? And he's like, see? And I'm like, no, shit. All right. 
Apparently I had at least a 10,000 peso limit on the old visa. We got out of there. Now, if you remember, I said I was flying home that day, so I had to catch a flight after that. I don't know if anyone here has gone to the airport bleeding. It's not ideal, all right? So we, we hailed a cab, we jump in the back, the driver looks back, sees me all messed up, and he goes, oh, would you rent a scooter? <laughs> Which, that made me feel a little bit better. I'm like, all right, I'm not alone, right? And I had flown out of this airport before, and in Cozumel, at this airport, they have a pharmacy, one of those good Mexican pharmacies, where they have all the drugs, which is great. You know what they didn't have? Bandages. <laughs> it's the only pharmacy I've ever been to in the world that didn't have band-aids or Neosporin, anything. And she didn't speak any English. I'm like, do you have bandages? And she just kept pointing out, like, Viagra and, like, steroids. And I'm like, that's the last thing I need right now. And I'm pantomiming, I'm like, I'm bleeding, I need band-aids. And she's kept pointing at the Viagra, I'm like, no! Are you kidding? I'm about to be on a plane with strangers. Like, that's, that's what you want to add to this problem? No one's gonna want to sit next to that guy, just some dude actively bleeding and super excited about it. Just... Take a seat, I got some stories, you know? Like, no one wants any of that. <laughs> So I ended up going to the bathroom and I just wrapped my hand and my leg in toilet paper. <laughs> so for five hours, I just sat on an airplane just covered in toilet paper. And then, uh, so that's, why I, that, that's why I don't do anything. I try to keep things pretty simple. 